Hi there. Today, uh, on this slightly cooler day, we're looking at Mark chapter 9, verses 14 to 32. Mark chapter 9, verses 14 to 32. So it's a slightly longer passage today, um, uh, but there's one particular thing I want to particularly uh, focus on, and that's the comment made by the boy's father uh, in verse 24. I, be I believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Uh, and I think that's uh, a really interesting thing uh, for that man to say at that point, and it, I, I suspect it somehow it probably uh, resonates with a number of us as we uh, go through our day-to-day -day lives uh, and deal with serious things at times, as this boy's father was, as this man was here, uh, and are caught in that mixture of doubt and belief uh, and wondering uh, what's going on. Uh, we've, the, the disciples have just seen, or three of the disciples have just seen this transfiguration, as we just saw, um, uh, uh, and they come down from that, and the rest of the disciples, not Peter, James and John, are involved in a bit of uh, an argument. Um, and as it turns out, uh, three of the, uh, this, this man has brought his son, who's got a, uh, an evil spirit in him, uh, to the disciples, because uh, he's seen what Jesus and his disciples can do, and said, can you drive it out? And it seems that the disciples have kind of thought, oh, we can do that, and then discover that they couldn't. Um, uh, very often, uh, people think they can do something, and sometimes even in in uh, uh, followers of Jesus will think they have a power to do something and discover they don't, and it's sometimes a bit embarrassing. And these disciples certainly had that. Perhaps they were complacent. Perhaps they thought they had it all in the bag, so to speak, but it turned out they didn't. Um, uh, Jesus, though, um, J Jesus uh, has some words for them. Oh, unbelieving generation, uh, how long shall I stay with you? How long will I put up with you? Um, and it appears this might even be a rebuke of the disciples. They're the unbelieving generation. They are still not quite believing, possibly, and certainly the crowd. Um, maybe even the, the teachers of the law, they were also kind of using the fact that the disciples couldn't do this as an argument to say Jesus didn't have the power that he claimed to have. All those things are possible there. But Jesus is uh, rebuking the unbelieving generation, but then particularly brings... Uh, asks for the boy to be brought to him and asks the boy's father about it. How long has he been like this? Um, uh, if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Uh, it's almost as though the, the man there says, well, if you can, he's not sure that Jesus can. If you can, why don't you do it? Um, it's often an argument that we hear about in, uh, from people, isn't it? If, if God could stop it, why doesn't he? And here's this, here's this man asking this question here. Um, Jesus kind of comes back at him. If you can... Um, isn't anything possible for the one who believes? Um, and the boy's father comes out with his statement of belief. Yes, I do believe. Help me overcome unbelief. He's not, he's not sort of 100% all in for believing. He believes, but he also has a sense of, but I'm not sure as well. And often that's what we're like in all sorts of things, isn't it? Yes, I do believe, but at the same time, I'm not sure. And how do I work that out? And uh, in a sense, the boy's father knows that he believes in Jesus, even if it's just a little bit, and he also knows that Jesus is the one who can help him overcome his unbelief. Um, uh, Jesus uh, um, uh, sees the crowd coming um, and so takes action and immediately uh, uh, sends the evil spirit out. Uh, the, the man, the boy looks dead, but, the, but Jesus says, no, he's not. And he stood up and away he goes. It's amazing. The disciples who couldn't get rid of this spirit before, they must have been particularly perhaps chastened, uh, certainly amazed. And when they go inside, uh, he says, uh, why can't we drive it out? This kind can only come out through prayer. And that's the comment that's occasioned a lot of uh, talk, actually. Does that mean the disciples should have prayed harder? Um, there's been, uh, I have seen attempted exorcisms where people think, if only I prayed harder, or perhaps if someone's sick, if only we'd prayed harder, then God would have done it. And it's not, uh, uh, I'm not sure I want to say that. In fact, that's not what the Bible says generally. Jesus generally doesn't need to pray harder when he comes out. He, he, he speaks and it comes out. But I wonder whether the prayer, what's the only prayer, if anything, that happens in the whole account? 
It's the prayer of the boy's father, isn't it? The request of Jesus. Help me overcome my unbelief. In a sense, it seems what Jesus is saying here is, is that this uh, is, is that what was needed was for uh, the, boy, the boy's father to entrust himself totally to Jesus and to acknowledge his own unbelief and acknowledge his own doubt and to say, Jesus, please help me with that. Um, uh, others we've seen have had their uh, ailments healed when they've expressed their trust in Jesus. And here's this man here expressing his trust in Jesus as, in a sense, doubtful or unsure as it was. And we will know that too, don't we? Sometimes we uh, will acknowledge that we trust Jesus, but sometimes little, little doubts creep in. We're not sure. Um, uh, that doesn't mean we're suddenly not a Christian. It means that sometimes those things happen and the right response is in prayer to ask God to help us with our unbelief, to help us with uh, even with the small, the mustard seed size faith that we have to uh, continue to entrust ourselves to Jesus. And that will be a Jesus who, as we read at the very end there, and this is the second time Jesus does this, um, says, I'm going to die and rise again. The disciples are still a, don't know what to don't know what to make of that. Um, they still believe, but need Jesus to help them overcome their unbelief as well. And why don't I pray for us that Jesus will help us help us overcome our unbelief, um, and that we entrust ourselves to Him uh, uh, and no one else. Let's pray, Heavenly Father. Uh, thank you for this account in in the, in, the, in Mark's Gospel. Help us to trust you. And, and Father, help us to overcome our, our distrust, our unbelief at the same time. We all know, we are all aware, Father, of the way we trust, but sometimes we doubt or sometimes we're not sure. Father, when that happens, help us not to move away from you, but to come closer to you and help us to overcome our unbelief. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow.